in the next section we'll start working on some um, first of all some shaping and get the, the, the form closer to the the concept and then we'll start working on detail in the eye nostrils and the mouth area so uh, in the first video we talked about the fact that in box modeling um, you don't generally use reference if you're finding that your um, uh, creature or model or whatever it is you're working on isn't isn't going the way you want in terms of shape you can um, you can put some reference in you can import the reference into the front and the side just to just to check uh, and keep switching into that so if um, if we switch into side profile here I've just brought in uh, an image that we're using let's go back and I've s basically switched the model over to let's find the right view method so we've gone to in this program we've gone to like a see-through um, material which is uh, or view method which is called ghost in this and basically I've dragged um, the individual parts of the model to a rough approximation um, of where I want it to be in that view and also in um, the front view and you can see there dragged it roughly to the shape and that means you can get um, you can get close to your uh, desired shape without having to guess everything um, I don't use this method a lot myself um, I tend to do it by eye but it's a good way similar to point by point model it's a good way just to make sure your overall proportions are where you want them to be and you can see now that we're very very close there um, just by dragging the individual parts so we're very close to the underlying shape uh, the nose is a little bit higher so it doesn't take much just using uh, a number of tools just dragging around and tweaking and getting to uh, to sort of shape that you want you can see the mouth roughly in the right place and the chin's about right okay and then when you're close go back to our flat mode that we're using and then just evenly distribute some of the polygons that you've moved around I'd done some of the tweaking and the moving just before I came into the recording so there shouldn't be much to do just to get a nice even feel all the way around going back and looking at all the little areas that we had before some areas again like this area here stretching too much so we'll fix that when we come to the to, to that area again and some areas might need more splits or they'll definitely need more splits um, but again lots lots of refining to do okay we won't do any more now because it's uh, can do a lot of it when we get to each individual area so let's do um, the eyes first of all so I'll just do a quick save as always So what I will do actually is just take away half of the model again um, simply because I was working uh, with a full mesh. So back to instance mirror. Um, okay, so I'm going to just uh, create a temporary eye. 
um, to use in the creation of the eye socket. So I've created some materials anyway, so um, just apply a white colour for the eye, it doesn't really matter, it's simply simply to um, give us a guide to model around. One of the best things to do when modelling an eye is to model around a sphere and this is how a lot of point by point modellers do it um, and that helps because um, eyes are eye sockets are a, are a deep set hole the eyelid is wrapped around a sphere um, and, it, and it's hard to do that if you don't have a sphere to see it and, and model around it so I'm just going to indent in once there and twice I'm going to do the same down here for now. It's not often that you model two eyes on the same side of a head. So we'll do a couple of them at the same time. And then I'm going to split around the eye again already. What I did notice just a moment ago is I'm going to need more polygons down here. Um, simply because that's a very long... Um, I need to. I need definitely to split down there. Those polygons are too big, so I'm going to split all the way to the centre there, and then I'm going to split from there up into there. It gives me more to work with there. Split around that one. Now, obviously, that's given me a problem down here. This is one of those that we'll correct as as we go. Make it into if we do it like that, what we've done there is we've turned that polygon flow around. So oops, I made a mess there, so we'll just merge that one. I've got an open hole there, so we'll just get rid of that. So the problem I had there was I uh, I ended up with um, a couple of stray vertices. Now the reason I I did that, which was to hit C in this, but to in other packages it's to basically see it subdivided, and that showed that there was a problem there very quickly. And it's one quick way of testing your meshes. Keep switching it to sub D mode in silo. As I say, it was C and reverts back with a V. Um, so we've turned this flow here. So this is now a flow coming around here. Not necessarily what we want, but it's better. It's obviously resolved that that problem with the triangle for now. So the eye's got much more geometry to play with there now. And I'm going to cause myself another problem by putting another loop in there. I say cause a problem. It doesn't cause a problem. It just gives us a problem that we've got to deal with. Um, I probably. Might as well put that in there, that solves that one. Up here we're going to have lots of forehead details, so it's uh, it's not a great deal of an issue. And we will be having, in here, we'll be having quite a bumped muscle group there. So that one's not a problem either. Just looking for opportunities as I go around the eye. 